this is my makerspace initiative at Big Lake High School. This is uh, my technology integration plan. So for the background, in the fall of 2021, our school district passed a bond measure that allocated funding to reimagine our media center and create a makerspace within it. I intend to be part of the team at my school that plans and develops what our makerspace will be and what we'll offer to our students. I'm interested in how the visual arts are connected to developing and nurturing creative thinking while keeping a visual, visually appealing aesthetic to design work. I believe that using the visual arts when developing products and tools allows students to think about not only how something functions, but also how well it fits into the world around. So why are makerspaces useful in schools? Uh, gives students hands-on learning experiences, provides opportunities for innovation, allows students to design, create, and test solutions through rapid prototyping, allows student learning and develops 21st century learning skills. So I will just touch on each one of those points um, for, for makerspaces. So the hands-on learning experiences. Making is not only about modern technology, it's also the primitive human obsession to use tools to survive in various circumstances and solving a variety of problems and challenges. Hands-on experience provide an embodied cognitive learning experience, facilitating retention of learned material through three-dimensional tactile mental representations, and then hands-on learning helps students to understand conceptual information in a physical object. And so for in this, this article that came up, it was a media center specialist team teaming up with the uh, uh, English teacher. And what the lesson was that the students had to create this narrative about, um, about houses. And so what they did is that they made their narrative and then they were able to design and 3D print those versions. And seeing that they're able to say, oh, you know, does this house have all the key features that I'm looking for? So they're able to visually see, you know, with their you know hands on what they were trying to think and express, and that allowed them to go back and rework their narrative if they needed to. So kind of interesting uh, collaboration. Uh, provide opportunities for innovation. Makerspaces and formal education enhance pupils' possibilities to design, manufacture, fabricate, test, and assesses innovative solutions to meaningful problems and challenges. Makerspace for instance, full access to tools and technology, which alongside effective lesson design can lead students to creatively solve problems presented to them. Uh, to foster innovation, makerspace are most effective when teachers help structure the lesson that allows students to ex research, explore, and create solutions. I think that is the most important part of this is that um, the, for, for like makerspaces, the teaching is, is really with the students and how, what's happening with them. So for the teacher side of things, it's, it's kind of how do they structure the lesson to give the students um, the freedom to explore, but it's still still formed so that they, they lead them to the discoveries that they're hoping to get them to. Um, so it's kind of moving from that, uh, you know, the, the sage on stage, the guide on side type modeling where the students are the ones exploring and teaching and learning. Um, allow students to design, create and test solutions through the use of new technologies. So the accessibility of 3D printers and other rapid prototyping machines allows students quick checks for understanding. Rapid prototyping allows for students to test theories and make changes when they realize they need to rethink part of the problem. Um, you know, like students learn through trial and error and the key to learning growing ultimately demonstrating competence. That is, that is like, at least for how I feel about um, learning and as far as it's done for me is that failing is a huge part of learning. And, and giving them, you know, like a 3D printer for this rapid test, um, lets them see what they've done right or wrong and say, okay, it's, it's not right, let's try it again, and then make another prototype. So that they're able to get that um, more, that quicker feedback um, from, from doing this type of work. Uh, new technologies can be adapted and used as an exploration towards problem solving. Students shouldn't see the new technology as a means to an end, but used for experimentation and exploration. So the part on this article is that like this new technology is great, um, but if all they're doing is just 3D printing something because you have a 3D printer, what is the learning? You know, what, what problem is being solved if, if you're just using the technology as a means to the end? Um, so it's, it's, it's meant to be a tool towards learning something. That's kind of what this article is about. Hello for, for student-led learning. Giving students ownership of their learning helps to build confidence in skills they already have and lets them focus on skills they're still developing. 
encourages learning through trial and error and reduces the negative connotation associated with mistakes. And again, that goes back to the failing is learning. Failing is still, nobody likes to fail. That's a terrible feeling, but um, it, at least those negative connotations with failing won't lead them to stop. You know, we want, we want students to keep, to keep trying after they fail. Um, and then it makes students interest front and center and allows students voice and choice in their projects. And this kind of goes with um, kind of the project-based learning model where, where students are the ones really leading it. And then for makerspaces uh, to use 21st century skills, um, uh, 21st century skills generally emphasize what students can do with knowledge and how they apply what they learn in authentic context. Their essence involves strong communication, collaboration skills, expertise in technology, innovative and creative thinking skills, and an ability to solve problems. And the more that I have been teaching, the more I've been thinking about the role of what I am doing and what I'm trying to give to my students. You know, and what I really want then the big takeaway is, is that they're leaving my class with a stronger creative thinking, ability to solve problems. Confidence isn't mentioned, but you know, like the confidence knowing that they can go into something and figure it out. Um, those, are the, those are the skills I want students to have. And, and of course, delivering it through my, my content area of, of the visual arts, I think it's wonderful. Um, but that's really what I want their takeaway to be. And I think using a makerspace allows for all those skills to be present because of the way in which a makerspace is designed. Um, so uh, students today have access to a limited amount of information resources, helping students learn how to use the given information in a thoughtful manner is needed. Makerspaces give students this need, needed opportunity by allowing them to experiment through the project-based learning, um, letting them do their own exploration. So how will uh, help to support the makerspace at Big Lake High School? You know, we're going to dedicate a space within the media center of the high school where students will have the opportunity to openly explore their interests. They're supported by new and up-to-date technology. So currently, our school, in various areas of our school, not centrally located, we do have a couple 3D printers. We have a laser engraver. We do have a CNC plasma cutter. Not knowing exactly where some of those will go, but um, we, we do have some up-to-date technologies. Um, but it's not student accessed yet right now. It's, it's tucked away in people's classrooms. Um, and also Big Lake, I think, is going to be supportive of Makerspace because Big Lake works a lot with the community and do, it does several career building opportunities. Um, so we have a real relevant experience through apprenticeship and learning, world's best workforce. We do a lot of PBL, youth apprenticeship, on-the-job training. And so from the administrative side of things, I think they might be seeing the Makerspace as uh, partnering up with our community and working on some of those 21st century skills and or uh, specific skills that, that companies are looking for. To encourage the makerspace at Big Lake High School, all teachers are gonna have access to the makerspace encouraged to rework lessons to allow for hands-on learning experience. Teachers will be given professional development opportunities to understand how the new technology works and see what the possibilities are. Space will be welcoming and student focused with the capabilities for students to work autonomously or collaboratively. Students will have access to the makerspace when classroom teachers are not using it. So just trying to encourage everyone that the space is theirs to use um, and also giving the teachers some, some time to, to work and play within that space so that they feel comfortable re, redoing some of their lessons to, to, with, to work within the makerspace. And then promoting the makerspace at Big Lake High School, getting people excited about the technology is a great way to promote makerspaces um, so once students and staff and administrators and the public are able to see what the pot, what's possible, they have more buy-in to the program. And for this article, they're kind of arguing that like technology isn't the, the means to the end, but it is a great way for people to get excited because not a lot of people have probably seen 3D printers work and that excitement of seeing them in action will help promote that space. And so once we get them in, then we can work past the technology and, and work towards those problem-based solving skills. Um, training staff on the usefulness of project-based learning, hands-on learning, and 21st century skills. And then um, making sure our social media presence is highlighting the exciting things that students are creating. So we're really working on being our own advocates for what we're doing uh, inside the school. 
different roles of students, teachers, and administration. The students, they're going to be the ones, uh, the intended learners of the space. Ideally, students will have open use of the makerspace under supervision of staff. Teachers will be encouraged to use the space and help teach their content area. Using tactile or digital components found within the makerspace helps to reinforce the ideas that they're teaching. And then the administration will support staff within training and adapting existing content to be teachable within the makerspace. Um, support teachers with the idea that the medium which they work isn't as important as teaching through the technology. Meaning, um, you know, you know, I, mean, I work in the arts, but like you can use technology in, in many different ways to still come to the same outcome. Um, so, and the administration, I think, would be supportive of of helping teachers get to that point. So for the different levels of technology, I was thinking, okay, I'm not sure, you know, since it is a space and it's not, a, you know, I'm not sure where each teacher would end up if, if they got into the space. I, I, I just started off at three because already being inside that space, you're gonna be using some technologies. Um, but then I listed the rest of them all the way up to six uh, for refinement because some of the work that could be done in the makerspace might be completely digitally done, completed with, as resources. But I'm not sure if it will depend on teacher to teacher if, if they're bringing outside experts to um, help with their projects. So I wasn't really sure exactly where, but I, I know that the makerspace model kind of encompasses it all. I think it's really on a, a range of where teachers will feel comfortable and, and, and where that's going to land. It does have the potential to, to hit a, a lot of them. Challenges or obstacles with makerspace in schools. So the funding part, a big part of what I, from my research was that funding is, is a big one. Luckily, again, going back to that bond measure, um, we, we have funds allocated right now, um, but it, it, it doesn't cover long-term upgrades. There is a stop to how much money that will be. So this funding uh, will need to be addressed when setting up the makerspace. Technology wears out and it gets old and out of date very quickly. So schools need to keep up with the technology the same way schools and media center updates its books. And I think that's a very good point. Like what's really, what's good now, five years from now might be considered old. And so we need to figure a way to get those funds to keep things updating. And the other obstacle or challenge could potentially be that teacher investment part. Uh, teachers will be offered that professional development to see to help develop plans and see what's possible, um, but teachers just might be resistant to incorporate the use of the makerspace. Um, you know, they've been doing the same thing for 20 years and they're not going to want to change now type of an attitude. Um, but again, using that technology as a hook, as kind of a way to, to grab them, get their attention, uh, would be beneficial so that they can see once they're in it, I think that maybe some of that resistance would go away. So resources needed to support the makerspace, physical space supported by from the administration, initial funding or present at Big Lake. I bet again, that future funding would be um, needed. Um, so some options to help support the makerspace and keep costs low. One is to make the space adaptable. Moving stations um, is a quick and easy and cheap way to rework a space um, so that you know, it's good for one club, one teacher. You can rework and move them around uh, to be to be useful for another. So you don't need as much of everything. Um, perhaps along the community to pay to access the space after hours after school, um, and also finding community sponsors looking for workers with those 21st century skills, building tie in a, a partnership with the community and saying we can support these skills that you're looking for if in um, for employment but we'll need a little bit of funding for it. Here's some action steps just to start the implementation of the makerspace. Uh, I think we need to form a committee right now. There isn't one. It's, um, it's mostly we have a bolted list of where some of those funds are gonna go and one is a makerspace. So I think a committee be, be, would be useful. Uh, we need to locate and secure space in the Big Lake High School Media Center for the makerspace. Right now, I think it's kind of up in the air. We know it's going to be somewhere, but we don't know where. Uh, design the makerspace to be student-centered. Uh, make the space as flexible as possible in regard to work areas and seating. Um, and it was really interesting. This was a, a cool article because they were, they were talking about um, what type of space do students best work in? And, and what they kind of said was like, okay, it needs to be clean, but if it's 
too clean and pristine, students aren't going to feel comfortable working in. But it can't just be, it can't be disorganized. Um, they also talked about like having higher topped tabletops with higher seating. So even if someone's sitting down at say a stool or a bench, um, they're still with an eye level of somebody who is standing. So everyone's working collaboratively. It was, a, it was an interesting article. Um, next up, Makerspace Committee will determine which space and technology will be most beneficial for students at startup. Request funds to purchase the resources needed for initial setup. So furniture, tools, technology, you need to purchase those, those resources. And then finally set up that Makerspace and designate some leaders to learn the technology to get ready for the professional development. Let them become, you know, let them learn it so that they can teach others. Okay, long range plans to sustain, sustain the makerspace. Community engagement will be important to sustain the makerspace initiative. Um, drawing with community members and groups helps to network across various sectors in the community and the local economy and helps to build relationships within the school. Um, creates partnerships with industry to support things like schools world's best workforce and the work-based learning programs. Grants to help support the rapid change of technology as one another way to help further sustain this is if we start writing some grants. Um, and then highlighting student accomplishments both within and outside the school. So showcase the products of makerspace in the school community and let them get excited about what's happening. Um, so often schools are kind of closed off from what we're really doing. And it'd be good to kind of promote that and show what, what's actually happening. And then finally, it's just my resources all listed. That would conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.